This is the ROG Strix X870A motherboard from ASUS. It's built around the AM5 socket and the latest X870 chipset with support for AMD Ryzen 7000, 8000, and the new 9000 series CPUs. Fans of white hardware are gonna absolutely love this one. Let's take a quick look at the accessories that come in the box. This is the Wi-Fi antenna, also white to match the board, which is nice. ASUS, keeping it consistent, I like that. Down here we have our user's manual. And this is a big sheet of ASUS swag. It's just a bunch of different stickers. This is more swag. It's an ASUS ROG keychain. They give us two SATA cables. One has a 90 degree connector and the other's just straight. This here's just some zip ties for tying down cables in your build. There's a few packs of these little rubber support thingies for your M.2 drives. And this is an ASUS M.2 Q slide for mounting smaller M.2 drives and slots designed for longer drives. And the last thing here is a spare M.2 latching post. And here's the board. It's a Strix board, so you know it's gonna have all the gamer styling that ASUS can possibly throw at it. But with this one, it's not a bad thing because it looks amazing. This is the nicest looking motherboard I've seen in a while. The white PCB and the steel heat sinks and heat shields everywhere give it a premium and high-end look. And I think it's gonna be a popular choice for people building systems focused on high visibility, whether that's with an open air frame or one of the popular fish tank style cases. This thing's got some serious weight to it. All that metal on there really adds up. I like heavy components. It makes me feel like they're more durable and premium compared to lightweight and flimsy stuff. We have dual eight pin CPU power connectors on here. That's important, especially for high end CPUs. Gotta make sure they can get enough power to reach their max boost clocks and maintain stability. The power design's made up of 16 plus two plus two phases. MOSFETs are sitting under a couple of really big heat sinks and it's hard to see there, but there are some thermal pads over the chokes to help keep those cool as well. Overall, it's a pretty robust looking cooling system and it looks like it should do a good job keeping all that power circuitry running cool, which is obviously important for stability and the longevity of your system. And despite the huge amount of built-in cooling around all those power circuitry components, it does look like there's plenty of room around the socket to get your CPU installed and your CPU cooler without too much trouble. This board has four DDR5 DIMM slots with a maximum capacity of 192 gigabytes of ECC and non-ECC unbuffered memory at speeds up to 8,000 mega transfers per second OC. You can check the official memory compatibility list on the ASUS support website to make sure you're picking RAM modules that are gonna work with this board. It's always a good idea to check RAM compatibility because some motherboards can be kind of picky with certain kinds of RAM and there's nothing worse than a compatibility issue when you build a brand new system. There's a total of four M.2 slots. Three are hidden behind this big heatsink shield and one sits right above the main PCIe slot under a quick release heatsink. They can all support 2280 type PCIe storage devices and slot number two can take up to 22110. It's super important to pay attention to your drive configuration because there are some limitations based on how many drives you have and where you install them. Assuming you're using a Ryzen 9000 series CPU, M.2 slot number one supports PCIe 5.0 times four mode, and so does M.2 slot number two, and they're connected directly to the CPU. But when there's a drive installed in slot number two, your graphics card will be capped at 8X mode instead of 16X because the bandwidth is shared between the main PCIe times 16 slot and M.2 slot number two. The other two M.2 slots, number three and four, support PCIe 4.0 times four mode, and they're connected through the X870 chipset. All this can definitely be a little bit confusing, so I recommend pulling up the manual while you're installing your drives just to make sure you get everything set up properly. For added storage, there's also two SATA 6 gigabits per second ports, which is actually the least I've seen on a motherboard in a while. So if you're considering this motherboard for a build that's gonna have a lot of hard drives or regular SSDs, then you might wanna look elsewhere. There's two PCIe expansion slots. Slot number one supports PCIe 5.0 times 16 direct to the CPU, and slot number two supports PCIe 4.0 times 16 through the X870 chipset. So for maximum bandwidth with the latest PCIe 5.0 graphics cards, you're gonna wanna stick to that main slot right there. There's five internal USB headers, two USB 2.0 headers here, two more five gigabits per second headers over here, and this one's a 20 gigabits per second type C header. Altogether, these can power up to nine front panel USB ports, and I wish I had a case with that many USB ports because I guarantee you I would use them all. Audio components are in the bottom left corner. It's an ROG Supreme FX ALC 4080 codec supporting 7.1 channels and up to 32-bit playback. People who like a lot of fans in their system should like this board. There's a total of eight fan headers on here. These three are for your CPU fan, AIO pump, and CPU optional. And then we have system fans number one, two, three, four, and five. There's some RGB on the big shroud over the rear IO area, and obviously that's to be expected on a gamer board. 
Plus there's two 3-pin ARGB Gen 2 headers here, and one more up here by the dim slots and fan headers. And being an ASUS board, you can use Aura Sync to get all your lighting configured and all working together. There's a couple other things on here for overclockers and enthusiasts. There's a temperature sensor header here, and there's a CPU over voltage jumper over here that'll allow you to set a higher CPU voltage if you want to. The back panel has a pre-installed IO shield with display port, clear CMOS and BIOS flash buttons, HDMI, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, five 10 gigabits per second USB type A ports, two 40 gigabits per second USB type C ports, one 10 gigabits per second USB type C port with 30 watt power delivery fast charge, five USB five gigabits per second USB type A ports, Wi-Fi connectors, and this board supports Wi-Fi 7, and there's the audio jacks and an optical port. So lots of USB connectivity right there on the back panel. Plus remember, you can add an additional nine front panel ports as well. So altogether, this board is an absolute beast when it comes to USB ports. Overall, this is a pretty nice looking motherboard from ASUS with strong power regulation components, a decent amount of storage capacity, good cooling, and room for lots of ARGB accessories. It should turn out to be a nice board for high-end system builders looking for white components. I'll list a whole bunch of the specs and details for you down in the description along with some purchasing links. Make sure you check that stuff out if you're interested. Give the video a thumbs up, get subscribed on your way out, and we'll see you soon.